Here we have an Asus laptop that came in for no power. We already disassembled the board so we can see what's wrong with the board. Before we proceed with the repair, I want to thank each and every one of you who commented on yesterday's video. The one about the lawsuit. I won. Everyone is happy about the verdict. And I did not read the comments yet, but I have a lot to read. Over 1,000 comments to go over. So let's go over this board and see what's going on. Right now, the charging cable plugs in from here. We have a MOSFET on front of the board, and we have one on the back here, right next to the current sense resistor. I'm interested in the MOSFET on back of the board, and we want to test the drain of the MOSFET and see if we have a short. It's very common for this model to have a short on the drain of the second MOSFET, back of the board, because any short on the board, whether it's front or back, is going to show up at this MOSFET, usually. Not all the time, but usually. We're in diet mode, and we're going to test the drain of the MOSFET, which is right over here, and I'm expecting a short. Do we have a short? or not yes we do have a short okay we do have a short great so we're going to go ahead and inject one volt at the shorted area of the mosfet at the drain and we're going to monitor the board under a thermal camera and see what gets hot let me plug in the cable for the thermal camera so you can see what i'm seeing and we're going to switch over to the thermal cam just like that Right, and let me inject voltage at the shorted area of the MOSFET. One, two, three, okay. And what is hot on the board? What is hot on the board? What is getting hot on the board? I'm not seeing anything. Okay, that's my hand. That's where I have the voltage injected. And that's rest of the board. probably the short is coming from back of the board and we're not able to see it from here okay we're gonna flip the board we're gonna inject voltage here and monitor what's going on on this side of the board and how are we gonna do this easy Point the probe at the drain of the MOSFET and we have 3.4 amps being drawn by the board and let's look let's take a look but before we take a look I need to switch over to the thermal cam so you can see what I'm seeing and I need to inject voltage at that MOSFET again 3.65 amp draw and what is getting hot on the board right there right there you see it right here thank you very much thermal camera i really appreciate it right there right there one of the caps or both and we do not know if the caps affected the mosfets that we see here but we're gonna have to find out i never had to replace those specific caps on this model laptop so I'm glad that it was something else in this video. Just like that. Okay. Out. And what's the value of that capacitor? And people always ask, it's six million microfarads. 6 million microfarads if you can find that cap. Or we'll just choose 10 microfarads. Let's not do 6 million. And I have two caps right over here. I just got them like Superman.
if the laptop is fixed, like the speed of light, unless there's something else wrong with it. It's possible that one of our MOSFETs went bad, but let's see. What we're gonna do is measure the gate of the MOSFETs, and we should get a reading of about between 4K to 30K. We do not wanna see 0 0.5 ohms, one ohm, four ohms. That's a very low reading. So meter in ohms mode. And let's measure here. We have 10K, perfect. And let's measure here. We have 10K, perfect. And why not measure this one also? And we have 9.89K, perfect. So our MOSFETs are good. And there's a 99.99999% chance this laptop will work. How long did it take? It does not matter. It does not matter how long it took. It's experience that counts. Usually every laptop I work on is a quick fix because you build experience with time. You spend the hours, hours and hours and hours working under the microscope and you come to a point where you are able to figure out the problem quick. So how long it took is irrelevant to how much money you want to charge. I just want to confirm that we no longer have a short here. We should get something around 0.4 voltage drop. And we have 0.4, which is perfect. Zero point four is very good. And look at the flux here. It looks like the customer soldered a new port. He attempted the repair. I just noticed this. He soldered a new port, thinking that the board is not powering on because of the port. All right, so everything checks good. And I'll be back. And it's a no-go. No signs of life at all. No light, and the charger is supplying 19 volts. The charger is not in protection mode. Let me plug the charger in. We have to troubleshoot and see what's going on. I mean, all measurements, all components tested good. No short on the board, and there's no reason why this board should not power on. I'm gonna plug the charging cable right here. And let's see, I wanna test at the connector area, and this connector was replaced before by the customer. So maybe the soldering of the connector is not good. But we have to test and see. Meter in voltage mode. Let's measure right here. Do we have 19 volts? And we do. 19 volts, we do have 19 volts. Here, this is ground. We do have 19 volts here. Let's test at the MOSFET. We should have 19 volts here, and we do not. We do not have 19 volts here. Wow. And we do not have 19 volts here. What about if we measure here? No, no. Let's flip the board. It has to be something from here. Do we have 19 volts here? And we do not. Look at this. Oh wait, we do. We do. We do have 19 volts. Do we have 19 volts here? And we do not. What is going on? We're not getting 19 volts at the MOSFETs. Let's go back, front of the board. I cannot figure out why we have 19 volts at the DC connector, but not on the MOSFET. What is breaking the circuit? Maybe we'll go over the soldering, add more solder, and see if that makes any difference.
I do not have reason to believe that the soldering of the connector is what's causing the problem because we are reading 19 volts at those two center pins. But let's go over them anyway. I'm going to plug the charging cable again and see if that made any difference. Charging cable is plugged in. Let's measure at the MOSFET and see. Nothing. Nothing. If we measure here, we have 19 volts. I do not see a fuse here. What is causing the problem? If we had a board diagram for this motherboard, then we would have figured this out in two seconds, but right now I do not know what path 19 volts is taking to reach the MOSFET. Obviously it's going through the board. Nothing. I do not see a fuse, I do not see missing components around this area. And I do not think there was anything here, those look factory. Zero, zero. Let's look at this area again. Is it possible that we have a missing component here? We do see 19 volts here. Oh, maybe there's a missing component that's supposed to go here. When the customer installed the connector, he probably knocked off this component because Look at the way this pad looks, and look at the way this pad looks. So there was probably a component here. We are getting 19 volts here. Let me go to diode mode, and we're going to measure this point. Yeah, that's probably a fuse. Probably some type of fuse. I do have a couple of laptops similar ones i think same model that we can look into i have a donor board here it's not the same but maybe we can get an idea Let me flip the board, look at the back. This one is going to be different. The board layout is different. Let me grab something that looks similar and we'll take it from there. I think we found our problem. That's what happens when there's a prior repair attempt on a motherboard. We have to figure things out. All right, I have a laptop that we fixed for a customer this morning. Exactly the same laptop. Okay, and I want to look and see what component goes here or if there's a component in that missing spot. And oh yeah, look at this. Look at this. Look at this, we have a missing component on that board, this one. So I was right, we do have a missing component here. I do not know what this component is. Uh, maybe a coil. If we measure it in resistance mode, what do we get? 0 0.4 ohms. What I'm going to do for now is use a 0 ohm resistor and tomorrow, we're going to look for a similar board to extract that component from. We have a lot of Asus laptops inside, donor Asus laptops. We're going to have to look for that missing component and replace it. But for now, since it's already too late, we're going to replace the component with a zero ohm resistor and test to see if the board will power on. If yes, then that's it. The job is done. And all we have to do is replace it with the same component that was knocked off this board. So let's try a zero ohm resistor right here. We do not care if it's better than factory right now because we're going to have to replace it anyway. But let me add some flux to make sure the component is soldered properly. So what happens when we plug power? I just plugged power, 
and let's measure meter in voltage mode and what do we have here we have 19 volts and what do we have here we have 19 volts so the laptop should power on because since we have 19 volts here oh oh wait <laughs> i see the light on the keyboard we do not need to test any further we see the light on the keyboard look at this i was able to see the light from here you see it Okay, right there. <laughs> laptop is on. So all we need to do now is locate a similar laptop or a similar board, extract that component, put it on here, and the job is done. I still need to know what that component is. Maybe we'll carry it in stock. But for now, we'll take it off a donor board, and the job is done. So that's it. Good end of the day. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a comment if you have any questions and we'll do something else in the next video.